Okay, good morning. This is Josh with Kirin here and we are in the process of testing the 2 underscore 2 alpha. So with this new alpha guys and gals, we still have the same measurements that we had before in the channels. But the biggest thing is that we can actually now shut off channels if they are um, something that was maybe you were only using one channel the two, you don't want to freak yourself out or, or there's just a lot of noise in the way, you wanted to get that out of the way. So now you can shut off a channel you're not going to use. You can go on volts AC, volts DC, you know, put whatever channel you want down here. In the system test menus, now we have the different tests down here. Everything from parasitic draw, sensor tests, battery tests. Now I'm going to tap on the sensor tests. We can do uh, O2 sensors. You know, there is a video that will actually walk you through how to do that. Uh, it's automatically ranging us what we need here. Uh, we're going to go back and say, uh, what did I tap on there? Oh, well, let's just say back, you know, back to sensor test, the Hall effect test. You know, it's automatically changing our measurement speeds that we need for these different things. Um, there are videos to watch inside the app coming in the beta. This is just the alpha where everything's put together all the way through to the charging system. And of course, we are going to add tests as um, these different things are needed. So here we're going to go battery test cranking test you know here we rechange the speed everything's correct now currently it's using celsius but you can come in here and change that to fahrenheit uh, now fahrenheit's going to be over here so we want to use fahrenheit and we'll go back into meter that should be good there and i do want to take this unit and reset up auto connect because i like auto connect but everything's good there. It is cold in the office this morning. Cold for SoCal at least. Um, some of the coolest things aside from being able to shut off, uh, oh, you know what? And, and the reason that turned itself on actually was for the battery cranking test, it is taking into account the temperature of ambient. And so when we are cranking down on the battery with the starter and all the draws over time uh, related to temperature, the voltage drop of the battery is relative. So that's why the tool is looking at that. It's going to see whether or not the, the drop is like a short straight drop or a curved drop from load, all of that. Now here, although this is going to seem a little more crazy visually, it actually is a, a more, how may I say this? correctly displayed way or visually displayed way for the the speed of the tool to be represented so each of these four quadrants represents an amount of time or, or rather um, yes the amount of time that a a measurement like a burst of measurements will be taken or a sample rate will be taken so uh, rather more than just the time the amount of samples being used for a particular measurement so 32 sample window a 64 sample window 128 sample and a 32 sample window in other words in a in a measurement situation you know 32 samples could be seen as small and as you go higher you know that 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 window is going to get bigger and now within the quadrants you are getting your your um, measurement window and then of course in the ms or milliseconds area now you're talking about how quickly you want those samples to be measured at and so in all technicality we can take measurements at four millisecond data points every four milliseconds or bigger mil you know bigger data points however if you want a very fast measurement and a very small window still going to be 32 samples at four milliseconds apart however the um the window is going to be really small so you're going to have to start stitching together these these windows so the larger window at 256 at 32 milliseconds is really the optimal way to get these measurements and, and we'll see here in just a moment i'm going to show you some stuff let's go ahead and turn this off we are not using our tests before i do that actually uh, 
let's go to temperature tests. There's air conditioning tests. Let's see if that guy's on. Ah, she is. But I don't have the correct stuff hooked into the tool right now for this, so we'll go back to this. Temperature K-type thermocouple. So now I've got my thermocouple here, and it's not even hooked in, so hold on just a moment. Hmm. You gotta find a thermocouple. Got it. There we go. All right, so we got our thermocouple here, ambient temperature here. Watch this. When I go to graph, and, and this is kind of where I was gonna go with earlier, I'm going to do a few things here. Right now, I'm actually graphing both the internal temperature and the thermocouple temperature. Now, the movements around are due to the ranging, so if we wanted to come in a manual range, manual range we can actually just ease those up a bit so that each line is not fractions of a of a what do you call it fractions of a degree let's go back that's manual ranged as well oh shoot my own camera okay we're gonna go back to auto ranging i think i messed that up auto Auto. Okay, now we can go manual. Manual. So each of the each of the green lines was a fraction of a degree, and they still are, so that's pretty stable there. Oh goodness, I think I found a glitch in the So we're gonna turn channel one back to auto. Because that one disappears as I'm unable to manually range it here, so that's why this is an alpha. But anyways, what I want to show you guys is not temperatures. What I want to be able to show you is that we can pause the screen. We can play the screen. Again, go back to live, so pause, play. We can change the speed without having to kick out. We can change the actual measurement. So right now we're on whether our diagnostic menu, anything diagnostic menu, we can kick in here. Um, additionally, we should be able to change the meters. Now that's channel one range, channel two range, diagnostic menu, background. <gasps> okay, so we're not able to change the meters yet. This is still alpha, but I wanna go back and I guess you wouldn't really have a case necessarily where you're doing it the way I am right now, but let's turn this off. We don't need that. And we are gonna shut this back to voltage DC. I'm gonna show you guys something. I'm gonna be looking at a pulse width modulated circuit. Okay, so it's going from three to eight-ish volts, peak to peak. And let's, see, let's turn this off, because we're not using that, we just have that. Now we are going to hit the graph. I'll go ahead and turn this for us. Now right now we're not using channel one, so we are going to shut that off. Boom. <gasps> okay, see the red line goes away. Now, in here, this is still that pulse width modulated circuit. However, we're not watching the pulse widths. I am going to speed up the measurements here. Oops. And I'm going to hit the waveform button. I don't think that's the right speed. So let's come back and make this 32 millisecond samples. And boom, there we go. So what we're now able to do is without having to manipulate all kinds of crazy around stuff, we are able to come in and actually see these things. Now I'm going to go back to the speed make this a lot faster but it's going to be a smaller measurement window so for example we can take four millisecond data points but notice we're only looking at certain parts of this signal so that's what i was trying to get at earlier now we can get a bigger picture go out to eight millisecond data points you know it's going to give us a little bit more that's about one of those waves um 
oops, sorry, I was turning, hold on a second, I was turning the wave forms on and off. Let me turn that back on, we'll go back to speed. Here I can do a 30, 16 milliseconds, and a little bit of a bigger window, notice we get all that. And then of course back to the biggest window of measurements, oops. That's Gonna have to make those buttons a little bit bigger, I think. Definitely a little bit bigger. Mm, there we go. That should give us our full waveforms. So there you guys go. And then of course we got the white background. If that's not good enough for the camera, we can't change that back to black. But then now the plot lines are a little bit funky. Yeah, I can change that to mm, I don't know. Let's try orange. I like orange. That looks good. Although that red in the back is really really distracting so I don't know let's see if we can turn the red to something less distracting and we're gonna change this here to back to green will that do it for us yeah you guys get the idea I like the so anyways here we can go with oops that's too pink go with the pale pink We'll make channel 2 blue. I think that should make it nice and noticeable. There you guys go. So anyways, um, I'm going to post this up into the YouTube. I'm going to, well, I'll, I'll do it to all the social. And then also give you guys the Android side of it, ability to access the beta, and I, or the alpha. Now I will say this too, for the alpha, um, the current notes are if you do get a bug out, it will, you'll need to completely uh, close out the app and reinstall it. And I'm sorry, not reinstall it. Close out the app and reopen it. Now I will show you this. Right now it's under Curian test. It's not under the, the normal app. So it pulls up as this. It doesn't pull up as our normal app. And I'll let this thing zoom in here for just a second so you can see a little bit more. But that's the way she pulls up. And this app is really resource intensive. So if you do have an older device, it, will, it more than likely uh, will hang up a little bit, but it shouldn't freeze it indefinitely. Just be a little patient with it. But again, alpha, not production release. So if you guys need anything, you let me know. And uh, I appreciate it. You'll be good. We'll see you guys soon. Bye.